Hi everybody, my name is Mike Wilmer from 1614 Fitness. We've been running 1614 Fitness in Bear in Sunset Station for almost, actually over 13 years now. And yeah, I'm old, I am. And people have been asking me for quite a long time to get more involved with sending out newsletters and sending out text or sending out emails. And I'm kind of an old school guy. I don't really have, I don't even have a Facebook for heaven's sakes. But long story short, I've finally been pushed into the e-century and we're gonna to put together podcast under the heading, exercise for beginners. Very soon, we're gonna have four plus one equals five, the guide to eating. We're gonna have setting goals. We are going to have exercise plans fail while yours will succeed. And today's, our first one, is gonna be yes you can. So why are we spending so much time working with exercise for beginners as opposed to all those exercise veterans? Well, it's been my experience that those folks who have been doing it for a while, well, they've been doing it for a while because they're comfortable. They've got set in their ways. They feel comfortable how to eat. They're comfortable in a gym. They're comfortable in that setting. People that just begin, they're probably just beginning because they've been less than excited or less than confident to come into the gym. It's been, once again, my experience that the hardest part for folks to come to the gym is just that, coming to the gym. There's this common misconception that all gyms are gyms. Sweaty, stinky concrete floors with a guy in a, a string tank top or girls in spandex parading about, not caring what you're doing. That's not at all what we do at 1614 Fitness. Our goal is to get people who might be slightly afraid, we're not real comfortable. We need to make sure we give those folks love so we can help turn those folks, beginners, into workout veterans. So hopefully they can make the life changes that they want to make. That's really what it's all about. Folks get up every day and go, man, I wish I could do that. I wish I could do this. But very often those same people who are wishing don't ever make those changes for one reason or another. I hear this all the time. Do you know that Debbie ran a 5K? Or Chuck ran a triathlon. Or Dino did the mud run. But me, oh, I could never do that. I hear that all the time. I could never do that. And my question is why? Why can't you do it? So that being said, let's talk about what I think you really want to say. When somebody says to me, I can't do that, I really believe in my heart that what you should say is either A, I've never done that before, or I don't really want to do that because I think if you want to do it, I bet you can. So here's my greatest beef, my greatest beef of all time, because I'm early. I'm an early bird, not by choice, but just because life kind of happens that way. I get up every day at 4.30, which by the way, have you ever done the, uh, the I, I call it the, the clock prayer. Like this morning, I'm laying in bed and I've got the drool coming out. I'm so excited. I'm happy. And I'm, I wake up for some stupid reason and then I immediately go into the clock prayer. The clock prayer is when you go, please God, please God, make it be midnight, make it be midnight. And I looked at the clock this morning, my alarm clock is set to go off at 4.30. It's 4.22. That's bad, that's terrible. That is not a way to start the day. So I kind of lay there a few more minutes, the jewels now dried, I'm cranky, and I figure, what the heck, let me just get up. Nine times out of 10, I beat the alarm because it's just, I'm cursed, but it is what it is. But when people hear me say I get up at 4.30, they're like, dude, what? Why would you ever get up at 4.30? One time I was going fishing with this dude who's a little bit older than me that makes you pretty old because I'm old. Anyway, so he says, listen, you pick me up here. We'll meet somewhere for coffee at 6.30. And he says, is that too early for you? I'm like, dude, no, I'll be there. And he questioned and questioned and questioned. I'm like, I'll be there. Long story short, I get up at 4.30 every day. And people all the time go, dude, I could never do that. Okay, I could never do that. Let's go back to what I said a few seconds ago. A, I've never done that before, or B, I don't want to do that. I think it's one of the two because I think you can get up. Unfortunately, life kind of creates situations where we have to react. We don't really want to, whether it's getting sick, whether it's getting injured, or whether, sometimes worse, a loved one gets sick or injured. And we see people go through gosh awful life experiences that they don't want to go through, but they have to. They then make these dramatic life changes that 
are just that. They're remarkable. They're amazing. And it just kind of, we go back to, I could never do that. Well, unfortunately, those people have no choice. But let's go back to those people who say they can't do it. I'm like, I could never run a 5K. I, I could never do a triathlon. I could never do a mud run. I could never get up at 4.30. Either you've never done it before or you just don't want to. If you want to do something, you can. One of my favorite phrases, and this, I encourage you to check out the goals. This is one I use all the time. It's grammatically disastrous, but I love it. You always do what you've always done. You always get what you've always got. Right now, Mr. Romano, God love you, Mr. Romano, my grammar teacher in high school is rolling over because that grammatically is a disaster. You always do what you've always done. You always get what you've always got. I know, it's terrible, but it's true, isn't it? If you want to do something different, you, you got to change. You, you got to change. You can't have change without instilling some sort of change. What's the greatest example of, uh, uh, of lunacy or insanity? Doing the same act over and over and over and over and expecting uh, a different result. It's just not going to happen. Well, I could never do that. If you want to do that, you got to change things. You got to change things pretty dramatically. So I can't get up at 430. That's a mouthful. I can't get up at 4.30. And they're emphatic too, by the way. They want to know, I can't possibly get up then. That's crazy. Let me tell you a story. I'm going to give you three examples of people who can, that were dealt a card, or a hand of cards, much worse, much more challenging than I'm ever going to get. So let's start with Paula. Paula may be angry that I'm using her in this story, but I'm okay with that. Paula doesn't have use of anything from here down. Paula has been training at 16, 14 for 12 years. 12 years. I get up, get a shower, put on my socks and shoes, put on my shirt, drive, go to the gym, act like a buffoon, have my coffee, act like a buffoon, say hello, act like a buffoon. I know it's a trend. Bottom line is I get to do all these things easily and comfortably and I walk into the gym and I work out. Nothing Paula does is easy. But I've never once in my entire life, and I see her all the time, I've heard her complain about it. I've never. She couldn't come to the gym this week because she's got a sore on her leg. She's got complications again because of the chair. God love her. She'll be there next week. Think about that. People say they can't go to the gym. Paul's not in the gym this week because she's got a sore on her leg. But she'll be there next week. I can't get up at 4.30. That's crazy. All right, let's go back to Paula. Paul is in a wheelchair. So for Paula to work out, a Smith machine is like this apparatus with rods, and it's basically a bench press or a cage, but it's in a, a supported thing. I'm pretty smart, aren't I? A supported thing. So anyway, we, we get a bench, and we roll, we lock her down, and we actually use her bench as a bench, and she works out. She does bench press. She does close grip. Then we get her up, we spin her around. She checks her pretty self out in the mirror, and she does shoulder presses. She's in a wheelchair. People with a hurt leg. Then when we're done that, we cruise over. And we do dumbbell raises. I tell her she's flapping like a bird. And I say something mean and nasty. I love it. I pick her on her constantly. She cruises into the gym and I scream at her. It's fantastic. People think I'm a mean, cool guy. I don't care. That being said, so then we cruise around the other thing and we do tricep pushdowns. All of which is being facilitated while she's in a chair. And I people look at me all the time. I can't get up at 4.30. Really? Because Paula got herself up, dressed, cleaned, got on dart, got dropped off, got off dart, came into the gym, and worked out. God bless her. Paula can do it. She can. She does it all the time. So Paula, that's a fun story, Paula. Thank you. Which brings me to Dude Love. And I might be infringing on some WWE thing, but he's a young kid, so I can't even say his first name. I don't want to get in trouble. If the story of this young man doesn't give you chills, you're done, man. So here he is. We'll call him Dude Love because he's just a dude and he's a lot of fun. He's a high school or local high school. No, I should say he's a high schooler going to school locally. And he's also in a chair. And, you know, bottom line, his body doesn't react the way ours does. You know, everything's kind of tightened up. Well, if, if you don't understand men, and a lot of people don't, I can, give you, I can tell you one fact. At one point in a man slash boy's life, we all want to bench press. Some it lasts for years and years, other last for 10 minutes. At one point or another, every boy wants to bench press. I got to know this young man, again, lovingly calling him Dude Love, through my nephew. And we were talking and this and that, and he's got this kind of, you know, eat and grin. And he says to me, he says, you know, I've always wanted to bench press, but I just can't do it. Me being the buffoon that I am, I go, why not? 
And he looks at me like, what, what, what do you mean, why not? I said, well, why can't you? He goes, dude, uh, I thought I bet we could figure it out. He says, really? I said, well, I don't know what we do or even how we do it, but maybe. So he says, can I try? And now I'm painting myself in a corner. I better figure it out. So I said, dude, love, meet me in the gym at 6 o'clock on Thursday. And his mom is foolish enough to bring him. So they bring him, and, I'm, and I, I don't know what to do. His chair is different than Paula's. It's got parts on it that I don't understand. And I say to his mom, I said, what am I allowed to do to this child? And she goes, I don't care, I'm doing cardio. I go, for real? I said, could you sign this form? She says, yes. I said, sign it again. Okay, she signed it five times because I know I'm going to sue. I said, are you sure I can do anything? She says, I'm doing cardio, leave me alone. And he's looking at me like, yes, are we benching? And I am like, son, I don't know what we're going to do, but we're going to try. I scoop him up and I lay him on the bench. He begins to wiggle and I'm like, you're going to fall off. I take my belt off, kid you not, strap his duff to the bench. And people are looking at me like, going, what are you doing? I'm strapping him with my belt to the bench. And then I kind of pull away and go, I'm going to kick you now, watch. And he starts giggling and laughing. So now I literally have dude love strapped to the bench. And his hands don't want to go where I, 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 they want to go. But we figure it out. And he benches. And he looked up at me and he started to shake. He was so excited that, that, that he benched. He was out of his mind. I go, dude, was that cool or what? And he was so excited, genuinely excited out of his mind. Now, let, take yourself back to high school. For me, it's 122 years ago. But take yourself back. There's a huge period of that where all that matters is that you're cool. Cool in one group. You know, there's all the groups now. You want to be cool in one of them. If you roll into school in a wheelchair, it's going to be tough to be cool. And it don't matter to me. I don't think it ever mattered to me that much. But to kids, it does. And here's a dude who's in a chair at high school who comes to a gym and he told me I was scared to death. Now he's so excited that he's in a gym and he's benched like a big boy. He's shaking. And before long, he starts coming in every week. And before long, all the guys at the gym knew him. And they all talked to him. And he's kind of puffing up. Hey, what's up? I'm benching today. He, he started doing the gym nod too. Made me happy. He will be there. He may have been here this week. I didn't see him there this week, but he's there twice a week with his mom. His mom now, she gets up and helps me. I have a, I have a belt in my office that I use to strap him down. So I'm proud. I'm happy. We did this. I'm thinking we're done. So we're, we're benching and we're doing different things. And again, you know, physically, there's, we got to kind of, we got some objectives, we got some challenges, we got to work around something, but he does every time. And then there's people who say, I, I can't get up at 4.30. Okay. So then he looks at me, dude love looks at me and says, you know what I've always wanted to do? Now he's cocky because he's in the gym. He gets all puffy. You know what I've always wanted to do? I've always wanted to use a leg press. What? Just shut up and bench. No, I think I can, I can leg press. Mom, he wants a leg press. She said, well, go ahead. You got to sign more forms. There's a lot of forms you need to sign. And I need, I need notary or whatever that is. I need pictures. Shut up. Sign. Stamp it. So I said, for real, can he, I don't know what capacity these legs are. So we just have to be careful. I'm, I, I'm legitimately terrified that I'm going to hurt him. So I, he says, how are we going to do it? And I don't, I don't have a clue. I pick him up. We get him back in his chair and we go over to the leg press. We have a kind of a quasi horizontal leg press. All right. So, okay. Pick him up. We got him in the leg press. He's seated. So he's sitting kind of upright. And I said, buddy, hold on. Uh, hold on. There's handles here. I said, I'm, I'm serious now. I'm a goofball, but safety is paramount in my world. Please hold on, buddy. He knows when I'm serious because I get that look. I said, hold on. He's holding on. And then eventually I said, mom, get over here and hold him. I start going to get props. I go get that belt. I strap him. And then I hold his legs up 
So I got his feet here, and now I've got my leg here, and I'm literally spotting him with his foot. It's ridiculous. I look like I'm playing twi what's that twister game on a piece of equipment. It's ridiculous. He's giggling and laughing. Don't laugh, son. You'll fall the hell off. Just stay still. So now when he's pre when he even before he tries to press, his knees kick in. I go, hold on. I'll be right back. I run to my office. Now I come back with a ball. I got a little play ball. So I put it between his legs. They're going to keep his knees from caving in. I got his feet. I got my leg holding it up. I said, let's go, let's go. And he moves it just a smidge. How much? Puts it down and his eyes go. Whoa. He goes, I did it. I said, bro, I know you did. And he did it again. He did it again. He did it again. And he then he went into that shake. Oh, he leg presses. This is a dude. Wheels into school, wheels into the gym, benches, and then drops the leg press thing on me. Dude, that's amazing. Dude love, if, again, if dude love doesn't inspire you, you're dead. And all the dudes in the gym, he's a rock star. Paula comes in the morning, dude loves him at night. And his mom's good, yeah, go ahead, get him. He's happy, works out all the time. So if you can't get up at 4.30, I still believe, I've never done it before, or I don't really want to do that. I think that's a more truthful statement. And I'm not a big karma guy, but I do believe you got to be true to others as well as yourself. And that being said, if you say you can't do it and you really can, isn't that kind of lying to yourself? I just think that creates a bad mojo that I don't want any part of. I'd much rather say I've never done it before or I don't want any part of it. And truth be told, I don't want to get up at 4.30, but I do sometimes. Okay, so hold on. I got one more. I got Paula. I got Dude Love. I got one more. Johnny. Johnny's got a condition that's this big. It's a whole lot of words, a whole lot of letters rather, it's big. And he's a sweetheart I've known 15, 20 years. How we, he and I met, I think I met him up in New Jersey one time. That's a whole other podcast right there, how I met John. That's a whole other story. But long story short, John's in a chair, and, but not all the time. This condition he has, his ultimately, to really simplify it, his joints are kind of twisted, scrunched a little bit, and they just don't cooperate. Well, his body doesn't cooperate, but his soul and his mind very much wants to cooperate. He wants to do everything, and God bless him for it. So John says, similar to Dude Love, he says, Mike, I want to do cardio. Well, I'm thinking, well, cardio, again, I don't know the capacity of his, of his knees and legs. So I said, what can you do? Like, what, what do you think? He says, let's try getting on the EFX. I'm nervous Nelly. Again, the character of Mike Walmer is a silly rabbit, but I'm a serious guy when it comes to safety. I go, you want to get up there and do this? I don't know if he can do it. We get him up there. And again, his joints don't work in a fluid motion like ours do. All right? They, they don't. None of them work in a fluid motion. So he is on the, the side bed or the EFX and parts are moving and they're moving. And I see stuff and I'm, start, I'm, I'm afraid he's going off and he's excited. And I'm worried and he's happy. I'm like, you all right? He's like, oh yeah, I'm good. Oh, I'm good. And we get him down and we go through a workout and he becomes committed, committed to the gym. And think about it, if you're in a chair, your physical needs are different in terms of what you have to do. You have to transfer, you've got a, the chair. There's just different day-to-day -day things that you need to do. And from a physical perspective, there's some exercises that you can do to help make your life easier. John really wanted to work on his shoulders and his chest. He loved the chest. He'd do bench and he'd pound on his chest and grin at me. And then so he did that, but he also said, I, wanna, I really wanna lose some weight. So let's get back on the EFX. So now we're doing EFX and we're moving and we're moving and we're moving. He's working like a champ. One day I get a text, I think it was a text, it was a phone call, I can't remember, it was a long time ago. And he basically stated that his hips, maybe it was his hips, his hips are really hurting. And I just heard hurt, oh no, John hurt himself, we finally pushed the envelope too far, not good. I pick him up and I call, I know I called because I was worried. I said, John, what's, what's going on? And he goes, oh my gosh, it hurts so bad. I'm like, oh man, this is bad, all right, where? And he says, it's, it's not my back so much. It's not my back and legs. It's right, right in my, my bum, the meat of my bum. It's, it's on fire. I go, the meat part of your bum? Yes. I go, John, that's your butt muscle. And he goes, 
So that's a good thing, right? I go, yes, it's actually a great thing. John hasn't turned on his glutes, maybe ever. He described it as, Mike, my butt's on fire. So I said, dude, that's a great news. That's like you, me, or somebody else doing squats. We turned your glutes on for the first time and they're, respond, they're, they're reacting. You got blood, you got hamstrings, you got stuff going on back there. God bless you, brother. So let's go back to the original point I'm making. Mike, you get up at 4.30? Chuck, you're doing a mud run? Dino, you're doing a 5K? Doc Luke, you're gonna win the smiles? Joe Beecher, you're gonna run a city block? Joe couldn't run a city block. Joe Beecher is my friend. We do podcasts and stuff all the time. They're helping us with the mud run. Joe ain't running anywhere. But that being said, they can't do it. I can't do that. That's impossible. I can't do that. I can't do that. Paula gets up every day. Get yourself in a chair. Dude, love. Benches, goes to school every day. Johnny gets on an EFX out of his chair and now walks across the gym in front of everybody showing off. Isn't that fun? And people tell me I can't get up at 4.30. Well, lucky, lucky for you, I can help that. I can solve that problem forever. Here it is. First of all, the snooze button is a complete waste of time. It's all a lie. Remember that pretty girl who said she was gonna go roller skating with you back in the seventh grade but never did? That was a lie. Snooze button is a dirty, awful lie. Here's what happens with a snooze button. You hit it, it stays quiet for seven minutes. But when you shut your eyes 13 seconds later, it's going off, wah, 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 and you hit it again. So now you're frustrated and you're late. Not good. Here's what you do. You land in bed, the alarm clock goes off. Guess what? You stand up. I know, crazy thinking, right? Stand up. Then you turn off your alarm, and here's what's gonna happen. Either A, you're gonna wake up, or B, you're gonna fall asleep and fall down. And when you fall down, you're gonna wake up anyway. Then you get a shot, everything's good. Everybody can get up at 4.30. Anybody can make change. The problem is we gotta believe it. You always do what you've always done, you always get what you've always got. It's simple. Paula chose not to do what she's always done. Dude love chose not to do what he's always done. Johnny, same story. So if you say you can't, maybe it's your approach. Maybe you just gotta accept that you've never done it before or you don't really want to. And if you haven't done it before and you do want to, now we're cooking. Now you've got an opportunity to change your life. So if you have something that you want, but you've never done it before, it certainly doesn't mean that you can't do it. It just means that you need to instill change in your current life to allow you to do it. Just like those folks did, Paula, through Love, and John. All those folks decided they wanted something that they never did before. That quite frankly was a much bigger leap than getting up at 4.30, which is a much bigger leap than running a mud run, or a much bigger leap than doing a 5K. 5Ks and mud runs and 4.30, that's cake. Those people I talked about before, they're doing something special. So if you have something that you truly want to do, but just haven't done it before, what you need then is a plan to establish a game plan so you can go do it. I hate to be a king of segue, but this is a great segue for you to go check out our goals podcast, because that's what we talk about. We talk specifically about if you want something, this imaginary thing that I keep doing over here, if you want that thing, but have never done it before, you've got to come up with a game plan to make it happen. You always do what you've always done. You always get what you've always got. These folks I keep talking about here, these imaginary friends that don't exist, Paula, Dude, Love, and John, they changed, and they got what they wanted, and you can too. It's all a matter of understanding what it is you want and coming up with a plan. I hope to see you on the next podcast. Go check out Goals. That's the best one, I think, for where you're heading. All right? We'll see you soon. My name is Mike Wilmer from 1614 Fitness. I'll see you at the gym.